Dear friends, in this video, I like to highlight the surgical management in a case of high myopia. The patient had a central dense nucleosclerosis of 4 mm. I like to tell you how we need to modify the CHOP technique. This patient had high myopia, action length of 34 mm and IOL power of minus 3 diopters. There was a central dense 4 mm nucleus opalescence. The periphery was extremely soft. Well, the important message is we need to change the technique of direct chop a bit in these cases. So let me show you how I handle this case. While performing capsular rexes, I try to use the edge of the nucleus sclerosis area as a template on which to fashion my central curvilinear capsular rexes. I have a nice round central 4.5 to 5 mm capsular axis. While performing hydrodissection, I realized that in my initial attempt, the fluid wave does not progress well. Probably I did not get the plane right. And therefore, I started another location, and this time I am successful in creating a satisfactory cortical cleavage hydrodissection. It is very important to get the right plane while performing the cortical cleavage hydrodissection to enable the nucleus to rotate. In the direct chop, the first chop that I do is actually not the ideal chop because you see that I am burying the phaco tip a little horizontal. This is because I think the nucleus is softer than it actually is. This gives me an unequal and uneven crack separation. It is then I realized that this patient has a very dense central nucleus opalescence of at least grade 3 and therefore in my next attempt I bury the phaco tip a little deeper and now I know exactly how deep to bury it. So I bury it to about 1.5 to 2 millimeters staying within the central area just inside the capsular axis. And this time, I'm able to get a clean chop through and through the nucleus. So, the depths to which you bury the phaco tip is very important. And also, you should not take the tip towards the periphery or beyond the nucleus sclerotic area. Because the periphery is soft and you may end up creating a buttonhole to the peripheral soft cortex. And you may inadvertently hit the posterior capsule. So, stay within the central zone and create as many fragments as possible. You know that the fragments are ready for mobilization if they follow your phaco tip after getting impaled with vacuum. So that's how I know the piece follows the tip into the safe zone and you know you can evacuate it. If this does not happen, you need to create smaller fragments till this phenomenon happens where the fragment will follow your phaco tip with the vacuum into the safe zone for emulsification. So each of these fragments are brought to the central area. Only the central part of this cataract is dense. The periphery is quite soft. In this particular case, I am working at pretty low parameters. Uh, instead of a bottle height of 100 centimeters, I have kept it around 85 centimeters. And I am working with a slightly lower vacuum also. Instead of 350, I have kept it at around 275 millimeters of mercury. Now the reason for this is because I want to prevent an infusion diffusion syndrome which is quite common in these extremely highly myopic eyes. That's why things seem to be happening a little slowly while I perform the phaco emulsification and fragment removal. So once the entire nucleus has been emulsified, you see that there is a slight tendency of the posterior capsule to rise as I am removing this last piece. And therefore, I use the dual linear foot pedal to reduce the vacuum while staying at the same phaco power and I am able to emulsify this nuclear fragment. 
the cortex is then aspirated. Please note that you have to remove all cortical fibers and you have to scrub the capsule carefully and neatly because if you leave residual lens epithelial cells behind they may proliferate and when you perform an NDAG laser capsulotomy it increases the risk of developing a myopic a retinal detachment. This is the minus 3 diopter powered intraocular lens. I was quite amazed to see how thick this lens actually is in the periphery. This is an indigenous hydrophilic acrylic minus 3 diopter intraocular lens. Now this is injected carefully within the capsular bag. The capsular bag tends to be big and also pretty patulous and therefore having a thick edge may actually help me to get a good seal between the capsule and the IOL. This will, may prevent the posterior capsular opacification. Now it is very important even if you have a zero powered IOL to actually implant the IOL within the bag. See how thick the edge of the IOL is. Now the importance of implanting an IOL is that it helps to keep the compartmentalization between the posterior and anterior segment of the eye. If you don't put the IOL in, there may be increased amount of something known as endophthalmodonosis and this can increase the risk of developing cystoid macular edema and retinal detachment in the post-operative period. So this is the end of the surgery, the IOL is implanted, it is well centered within the eye and I inject fluid cautiously to the side port and the main incision gets hydrated slowly. And finally, I close the case with the injection of intracameral moxifloxacin, suitably diluted. I thank you for your attention.